All right. Uh, welcome to the first of four uh, Igneous Rock videos that we're going to uh, shoot today. Uh, I'm Mr. Z, and we have Rima, Christina, Rima, Rima and Christina here to uh, to help me out, and we're going to start talking about igneous rock texture. So, um, I guess what we're going to do is that we're just going to define the term first. And then we'll just start looking at some of these characteristics of these rocks and then talk about texture a little bit more. So what texture is, igneous rock texture, is used to describe the overall appearance of a rock based on the size, shape, and arrangement of mineral grains. So a couple things that I'm going to do here just really quick. I just want to underline size because that's really, really important here. Everything else is important, but that's important too. All right, and I just want to kind of underline that just so we kind of keep that in the back of our minds. All right, so if we take a look at a lot of these different rocks over here, is there, is there one thing that just kind of stands out? Let's look at these guys first. Is there one thing that stands out about, like, uh, anything? What do you notice? Some observations. What about it? It's bigger than everyone else, and it's flatter. All right, yeah, so this definitely looks like it's kind of manufactured, right? Almost like a countertop that you might find in your house or maybe even a vanity, right? And you mentioned that it's, it's bigger. What's, what's, is it just overall the size is bigger, or is the stuff inside there big, too? Um, overall? Yeah, all right, that's, oh, that's good. Let's take a look at this guy over here. I'm going to put this in the camera. This also is kind of like that flat edge right there. Like, what do you notice about, like, those those pink ones. They're larger than the... Yeah, they're definitely large, but you can like see that they're pink, right? You can yeah. tell that they're, that they're something, and you know what other colors are in there. Black and gray. Yeah, there's black ones in there, and then there's gray ones, and then there's also ones that are probably a little bit like white, white. like that, right? And then if we take a look at this one over here, do we notice ones that are different colors? Yeah. Yeah, right? There's some that are kind of like a like a def like a dark black, right? And then there's some that are kind of lighter in color and some are like a gray, right? And if we look over here, this one is kind of the same as this one. We see dark ones, we see pink ones and white ones and whatever else. Right? So we see all of these different colors. And what do you think those colors are? What do you think all those are? If we think back to last unit or the unit that we're currently in, that we did all last week. What do you think those are? Um, the boxes that we took from the table over there. What were we looking at? Mm -hmm. All the physical properties. Yes. What, were, what are all those called? Minerals. minerals. Yeah, those are all minerals. <laughs> Great, you guys came up with it at the same time. Um, so those are all minerals, and that's what all these guys are, right? They're all minerals that are inside here. Right? And, and when we combine a bunch of minerals together, that's when we get a rock. That's what that's called, right? And, and igneous rocks that we're, that we're talking about in, in texture, um, it, it, it's, it's kind of involved and there's a lot of stuff to it and we're going to start, start picking it apart. So we've, we've talked about all three of these examples and we've noticed that like the, the minerals inside here are pretty big, right? Some of these are actually almost as big as the the hand samples that we had in the box, right? Do you think that you could identify that mineral? Yeah. Yeah, right? Is it big enough to identify? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It is big enough to identify. So, so when we see a rock that looks like this, right, and we see that the minerals are large enough to identify, we have a name for that, all right? And the name for that is... Phaneritic. All right? Coarse grain, so coarse meaning big, texture. Crystals are large enough to be identified with the unaided eye. What does that mean, unaided eye? What don't I need? You don't need to magnify it. Yeah, I don't need any kind of magnification. I don't need like a microscope or anything like that to see what the minerals are. All right? All right? And they form slowly beneath the Earth's surface. And I'm going to get into that in just a little bit. All right? So if we take a look at this guy and this guy, we see really large crystals, which tells us, right, that they're large enough to be identified with the unaided eye, and we're going to call that phaneritic, okay? 
All right, do we think we got that? Because we're going to use these as like some examples for us. So, so now, the next thing that we want to talk about is how did these crystals get as big as they did? Right? So, all igneous rocks that we've, that we've learned before, right, they came from either cooling of magma or lava. And magma and lava is molten rock. All right? And crystals, right, in the minerals, like they grow just like anything else would, right? And if they cool really slowly, right, then they're going to grow larger, okay? And inside the earth is where they're able to cool slowly because they're kind of insulated. So if you think of magma underneath the earth, right, and above this magma chamber or where there's magma, right, there's other rock that's above there that kind of insulates that. And if it's going to begin to cool and crystallize, those crystals are going to get really, really big. All right? So what we call that is, and we call most of these four rocks right here, we call them intrusive because they formed inside the earth. So intrusive are igneous rocks that crystallize beneath the earth's surface. All right? So what do you think these would look like if they cooled outside the earth's surface? Yeah, they'd be really, really small. And we're going to have a whole other video on that part, right? So if we see big crystals, they cooled inside the earth. And the rate of cooling was really, really slow. All right? So I'm going to move this back over here. All right. So now we still have a couple of things that we need to talk about. Right? Now, would you say that, let's take a look at this example right here. Sorry. Would you say that all of those minerals inside there are about the same size? Yeah. Yeah, right? Like, there isn't really one that looks any bigger than the other. Right? Yeah. Do you agree? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Would you be able to say the same thing about that? No. Which ones look larger? The pink one? Yeah, the pink ones do, because look at how big that pink one is, like compared to this dark black one, right, or this white one. I could still identify that one, right, but it's significantly smaller than that one. That's kind of a special texture, all right? And we call this porphyritic phaneritic. All right? So we already know what phaneritic is. What does that mean? It's coarse grain texture. Yeah, it's large crystals. Mm -hmm. Right? So we already know what that means. What porphyritic means is that there's two different crystal sizes. Right? One is larger, and the other ones are still big to identify, but they're smaller. Right? So, and we have names for those too. So the large, well, let me actually read this definition. So porphyritic phanery. Igneous rock where the ground mass crystals are large enough to be identified by the unaided eye. All right, so now we've got to identify ground mass and what that is. So, and we've got that definition too. And I'm going to point out to what it is first. So the phenocrysts, right, are the large crystals are the large crystals in a porphyritic igneous porphyritic igneous rock. Phenocrysts are surrounded by the ground mass. So which one of those in that sample are the phenocrysts? In this sample here. Which ones are the phenocrysts? Large the, crystals the are the pink ones, right? So all these guys right here are the phenocrysts. Right? That's all those guys. Right? And now the ground mass is the matrix of smaller crystals in the porphyritic igneous rock. The ground mass surrounds the phenocrysts. So what are the what's the ground mass here? Um, black and white. It. Yeah, it's everything else that yeah. isn't the pink ones, right? That's all going to be the ground mass that's over there. So everything can be identified with the unaided eye, right? But there's ones that are just larger, right? Do you still think this formed inside the earth? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, because the, everything is big. 
But you know what? There may have been different, like, cooling times for things, right? So as it was beginning to cool, the rate could have slowed down or sped up a little bit, and some minerals may have grown larger than others, um, and that's what created that texture. All right, so now we have a couple of examples here. And remember, we're looking at porphyritic phaneritic as one, or just phaneritic is another, keeping in mind that these are all large enough to be identified with the unaided eye, but they're all basically the same size. And then we have this one, which is porphyritic phaneritic. Porphyritic is two crystal sizes. Everything still being able to identify with the una unaided eye, but one's a little bit larger. All right, so let's start out with this one first. All right, what do we think this one is? Phaneritic. All right, how, do you, how can you tell? Because nothing sticks out that's bigger than the others. They all just kind of look like the same size, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. All right. Let's take a look at this guy. And you can pick it up. Pick it up and take a look at it. Yeah, right. Which ones are going to be the larger ones? The pink. Yeah, the pink ones too. Yeah, those are pretty large. Right, and if we look underneath there, we can see more of the pink ones. All right. And then what about this guy? And you might have to look real close with that one. Yeah? Is there anything in there that's larger than anything else? Let's take a closer look. See these guys? See in there? The grape? Yeah, they're kind of like that grayish mm -hmm. white, kind of that dull white gray. Mm -hmm. Right? Do you see those? You see how those are kind of large? Yeah. They're kind of bigger than everything else around it. Right? And this is this is a tough one. This is a tough one. So it's I, I mean I'm glad you guys picked up on that. But sometimes you really gotta look at them close. So this one would be porphyritic phaneric. The other minerals that are in here are big enough to be identified, right? But then we have ones that are larger, all right? So that one's porphyritic phaneric. Two different crystal sizes. What about this guy? It's phaneric. Yeah. All right, let's take a closer look at this one. Like, pick it up. Turn it around. See if you can see anything. Anything that's bigger in there? Wait, let me see these guys. See those guys? That's big. That's big. And this one's big. This one is this one is is, is kind of tricky because the ground mass in here is all the same. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's all green, right? And then we have these big ones here, right? And, and even though the ground mass like, may seem like it's small because there's no contrast, it's not like we have this guy where we have a black and a white, right? So these crystals are big enough to be identified, and then these guys are even bigger than that, all right? So this one would also be porphyritic phaneritic, all right? And, and in class, we're going to get a lot, um, a lot of practice looking at all the different textures. So quick recap, all right? We've got, we talked about phaneritic texture, which is large crystals formed where? Where do we form? Inside the earth. So the rate of cooling was slow, which allowed the crystals to grow larger. All right. Large enough to be seen with the unaided eye. Okay. Then we talked about porphyritic phaneritic, two different crystal sizes but all the crystals were, were able to be identified with the unaided eye. All right, any questions? No. All right, I think that's it. Thank you very much for being a part of the video. Thank you, Mr. Baldwin, for videotaping, and we'll see you in the next segment.